Hey guys, Julian here, and today I'm going to be talking to you about how to make melodic techno. You can get the project file and samples from this video in the description as per usual, and if you're a patron on my Patreon, make sure to check them out there because they will be available. And yeah, let's get started. So, the first sound I have here is this drone, which sounds like this. This is a pretty simple sound. If you watch my videos, you know I use this technique a lot. Basically, it's just playing this one chord. So we've got this playing an F sharp minor. We got F sharp and then A an octave up. I just took that and yeah, put an octave up. And basically what this does, is it just kind of gives a bit of like extra dimension to your track. Um, What you're getting when you have this is like sort of the relationship between all the different notes that are playing in the chord progression. And this chord, like, you can hear when it goes to that second chord there, it feels a lot more intricate than if you just had, like... Like, basically just something that was only playing the chord. So, yeah, this is just kind of adding a bit of depth to the track. Now, as far as the sound goes, it's also pretty simple. Basically, I made this operator, so I've just got these four sine waves here doing some FM. Um, basically, I just wanted, like, a sine wave with a little bit more texture to it. So that's the purpose of the FM. So, yeah, then after that, all I've gotten here is just a high-pass filter, cutting out some low-end. It kind of helps to clean it up a little bit. Like, with a sound like this, you don't want it to take up too much space in the frequency spectrum. So cutting that out just helps to get rid of that. And then finally, I just have this LFO on here, which is routed to the volume here. And basically, yeah, that's just giving it a little bit of, like, movement. You can hear, pretty simple. Um, just kind of gives it a bit more texture and makes it a little bit more interesting. And it sounds kind of cool going into the reverb. So the next thing I have here is this reverb. Which sounds like that. So, yeah, it's just like a pretty big reverb. Nothing really too much to say there. Uh, pretty standard reverb for a sound like this. Then after that, I just have an EQ8 cutting out all the low end. And then finally, a compressor side chaining into the kick. So the next sound we have here is the bass, which sounds like this. And so the way that I made this, I'll show you the notes really quick. It's just playing, it's just following the chord progression. We got F sharp. Yeah, and then all of those notes. And then you can see I just have these extra notes on the three of these two uh, little two bar patterns, I guess you would say. All those are just octaves and notes that we're playing right before. You can see if I put them down. Yeah, pretty simple. Just adding something like that in there gives more depth to the bass line and it kind of helps to make it stand out more too because when you hear it like with something else that's playing the chords like this organ you like that stands out to you a lot more you know you you really notice it more so then for the sound on this one all it is is a pretty simple re-space kind of sound you can see i got two saw waves here that detuned a little bit no fm even though i'm using operator and those are just going into a low pass filter and then the last thing that i have on here inside of operator is this LFO, so you can see that's just on the pitches of every oscillator. And yeah, it's very subtle, it's only at 4.5%. It's just kind of giving it some like analog, sort of like very organic sounding vibrato slash like pitch warble. So after that, I've got a bit of chorus to, to give a bit more width to the bass and just make it sound a bit deeper. You can hear when I turn that off, it's not quite as like nice and deep like that. Then after that, I've just got a little bit of saturation to kind of beef it up a bit. You can see I just turned up the drive a little bit and the analog clip, bass frequency, very slightly. Um, Yeah, this is just giving some, like, some grit and more texture to the sound. Then after that, I actually have this EQ here. And what this is doing is it's cutting out this pretty big curve around 100 hertz. And the reason for this is because the kick is also hitting very strongly around 100 hertz. And you can hear right now they're not clashing, but if I turn this off... You can hear this bass is very resonant and like just kind of loud in that range. So I just cut it out really sharply. And there we go. Now they don't clash, but you still get all of this low end here in the bass that you want. And then after that, I just have a compressor side chaining into the kick. So the next sound we have here is this organ, which sounds like this. this i will show you the chords first so this is just following the chord progression that the bass was playing we got this f sharp minor we got b major i believe b minor 
and then this chord, and then that chord. So pretty straightforward, kind of like, I guess you would say like an upbeat chord progression. I don't know. It's just kind of, you know, got a nice, like smooth and kind of like dreamy vibe, which is what you really want for melodic techno. It's like very ethereal is how I would describe it. Um, so all these are just basic triads, actually. And then I put the thirds up an octave. All those notes that are highlighted in the middle there are the thirds. If you're looking at, like, just a regular three-note chord, this is what it would probably look like. And yeah, I just put those up an octave. And this just kind of splits it across the keyboard and gives more space between the notes. So you can kind of hear each note a little better. And it spreads it out. And yeah, it just makes the whole thing sound a lot more full. So then for the sound here, what I've got is two sine waves and analog here. And then I just have those going into the amp envelope, which is set like this. You can see the second one is up an octave. And then I have a little bit of vibrato here. So you can see I've got the rate up pretty high. And then the amount at a pretty high amount as well. Like, it's just kind of giving it that, like, fast, warbly sound. If I turn it off, you can hear it's just a little flat. I like this because I feel like it adds some, like, more texture to the sound. So yeah, so then after that, I've got a bit of chorus for some depth and kind of a more like watery sound to it. And then I just have a little bit of reverb for some space and then a compressor side chaining into the kick and then finally an EQ8 cutting out the low end. So the next sound we have here is the ARP, which sounds like this. So the way that I made this is first, I kind of just like played in this ARP sound. This was actually what started this track, oddly enough. I had come up with this and then I wrote everything around it. So yeah, I just kind of wrote in this little like, like minor sounding kind of ARP thing. It just happens over one bar and then like restarts each time. It's pretty simple. Writing these, what I recommend you do is like follow a chord. Like for example here, I did F sharp minor, which is what the key of this track is. You can see it starts on F sharp and then immediately jumps up to the third and octave up with that A. That, yeah, you can see like if I make an F sharp minor chord, there we go. A would be the third. So it's pretty simple. Again, if you just sort of follow like chords and notes that work within those chords, you shouldn't have too much of a problem writing like arps like this. So then for the sound on this one, I made it with analog. So what we've got is actually just one sine wave. Um, you can see I've got a little bit of a pitch envelope on there. That's what's making it sound kind of clicky. Then, yeah, I just have that going into the amp envelope, which is set like that. And then the last thing I have here in analog is just a bit of vibrato. So, kind of similar to that organ. I've got it going pretty fast. You can hear if I turn it off. I'm back on again. And like, it's just a bit flat without it. Again, this adds texture and, I mean, no, no pun intended, but vibe to your sound. Like, it just gives it more yeah more like vibe like more of a defined kind of characteristic um to the sound so yeah so then after that i've got a bit of saturation you can see i actually kind of went in with the saturator here i've got actually a lot of drive at 13.1 db and then i've turned the bass frequency up a bit you can hear it's really bringing the sound out i wanted this one to be a little bit more harsh since these two and even this are very like smooth it it's kind of nice to have like a little bit more gritty sound around those. It makes it stick out a lot more and just makes it more interesting because you have, a, you know, like a lot of different types of things as opposed to just one thing in your track. So then after that, I've got an EQ8 cutting out the low end. And then I just have this echo, which is set like this. So that's what's giving it the space that you could hear. And yeah, then after that, I just have a compressor side chaining into the kick. Then the next sound that I have here is this little clicky thing from the drums, which sounds like this. So what this is, is this little, like I said, clicky sound. Basically, you can see it's just playing 16 notes. And then what I've done here is I've taken operator and I've got some white noise, which is set like this, going into a bandpass filter. And then the bandpass filter has an envelope on it. That's how you get that clickiness. You can see when I turn it off, it goes away. And then after that, I have that being modulated by this LFO. So then this LFO, you can see, yeah, it's on the filter. And then I have it on this SNH waveform, which just basically means random. And so you can hear the filter just kind of jumping around there. So it's kind of a nice way to add some cool stuff in the background to the drums. These kind of sounds have like a really nice texture for the style of music. So I like to add something like this. And you can hear it's also playing off of the ARP a little bit. Like, that ARP has a lot more energy when we have this in there. So I thought it was just kind of an interesting element to have in there. Um, so the only thing I have on there for effects is just a compressor side-chaining into the kick. 
So then the next sound we have here is this clap, which sounds like this. So just kind of like a standard like melodic techno sort of clap or like rim shot or whatever you want to call it. Like one of these kind of more like clicky sort of just like impactful clap slash snare slash rim shot. So with this one, it's really mostly about just finding like a good rim shot slash like a good sample to use for it. I recommend just looking through like some different techno sample packs. Maybe even trying, you can even try like some Foley and stuff or you could get this one, which is in the description. Um, But yeah, so then for effects on there, all I have is I just have this high pass filter, which is in the, which is in this sample you can see. Yeah, just cutting out a bit of low end. And then I have an echo to give it that like little 16 note rhythm. And then I just have a bit of reverb for some space. And so, yeah, pretty simple with this. This is what it sounds like with none of those. It's very dry, and I feel like adding the echo and the reverb kind of help, like, place it in the track a little bit more. Like, they give it more context that fits into this track. So then the next sound that we have here is the kick, which sounds like this. It's a really straightforward, just kind of like a nice, punchy sort of kick. With these kind of tracks it's more about just sort of knowing what type of samples to take so like any kind of like i said like clicky sort of punchy 808 style kick like this will really do the job like it's not too difficult to find a good kick for this style again you just want something very tight and punchy like this so then the last thing that we have here are these hi-hats which sound like this so these are pretty simple we just have like this one that's playing 16 notes and this one was just playing on the upbeat. So on the 16 note one, it just sounds like this. And yeah, just playing really simple 16 notes. And then I put a compressor on it, side chaining into the kick. To make it kind of pump with the rest of the beat, you can hear if I play this without that. It's cool, but it doesn't fit into the beat as well as that does. Like that really feels like it's a part of the track, if that makes any sense. And then on the open eye at, it's really nothing too crazy. Again, just playing on the upbeats. And yeah, so that's pretty much it for this one, guys. I just want to show you guys some techniques to make melodic techno and some stuff I've heard in a lot of the tracks that I've been listening to lately. So that's going to be it for today, guys. Make sure to let me know what you think of this video in the comments. And make sure to like this video as well as subscribe. Once again, you can get the project file and samples from this video in the description. And if you're a patron on my Patreon, check there because they will be available very shortly. Thank you again, everybody, and I will see you tomorrow with another tutorial.